Are painful Achilles keeping you from running? Let me show you how to fix it. Get up and get down, get up and get if Achilles pain has got you down, I'm here today with Graham Tuttle, the barefoot sprinter, and we're gonna talk about how to fix it. Now, here's the deal. For most people that have pain in their Achilles, what do they do? They jump on a foam roller and spend endless hours rolling it out. Or they jam their foot up against a wall and try to stretch their calves out. But I'm here to tell you today that this is not how we fix Achilles tendinopathy because it's a load-related issue. That means you're not strong enough. Let me show you how to fix it. Now, here's the deal. Think about your Achilles tendon like a thermometer. Most people throughout their day have built up a certain set level of capacity strength. So let's say your capacity strength is 80. Well, you've spent a lot of time walking over a full weekend or doing a full game of basketball and you haven't played in five months. Well, you may have gone too far over your certain set capacity level. You hit 90. Well, your tendon just hit a reactive phase and became painful. That's how tendinopathy is sparked. You overloaded your tendon past its capacity level. Now, there's a three-stage approach to fix. Step one is isometrics. So isometrics are basically lifting a weight and keeping the position the same, isometric. Now, there's two different calf muscles. We got our gastrocnemius and we got our soleus. Now, each of these are gonna be specifically engaged in different positions relative to the knee. So, for example, the gastrocnemius are gonna work when the legs, the knees are straight, right? So they're gonna be the bulby calf muscles there, they're gonna extend. So we wanna work in an isometric position that works in this capacity. So first you can start, if you don't have weight, you just press up through your toes. So make sure you really get those and press as high as you can. You can hold on to something, you can hold on to something if you need to balance it. Now once this gets easy, you can shift to one leg. Shift over, press all the way up and engage. You're gonna feel this muscle working really, really hard all the way as you're pushing in that ground. And then as that gets easier, you can go back to two legs with weight and you can continue to scale that up. And eventually if you run out of weight, you can go to one leg with weight. Now the other side of this is your soleus. And now that works when the knees are bent. So when you get to a position where the knees are bent and the gas trucks are not engaged as much and we need to extend. So press up as high as you can onto those toes and you're gonna feel the soleus work. Part of the magic of isometrics is it's a controlled position that lets us learn our body better. So the neuromuscular control and the muscles work a little bit more smooth. We're gonna press all the way onto this. Now, this is gonna be a thing that's gonna work the soleus. Now, how long do we wanna work for this? So research has shown that isometrics, again, it's a muscle contraction with no joint movement. So once you get up there, you wanna hold it for 45 seconds. And this needs to be difficult in order to work. But what it's going to do is provide an analgesic response, meaning it's going to help decrease pain. And research has shown that some tendinopathies will show a decrease in pain for upwards of 45 minutes after performing. Now, here's the thing to understand. Isometrics, while they're great for some people at decreasing pain thereafter for a short amount of time, they don't raise capacity. And again, that's how our issue was sparked in the first place. So what we have to do eventually is slowly build back your capacity with heavy, slow resistance exercises. So again, <clears throat> we're gonna do two different positions to work on your muscles. In the shortened position like this with the knee bent, we're gonna by primarily be focusing on the soleus muscle because the larger gastroc spans both the ankle and the knee. So in a bent position like this, we're taking some slack off the bigger gastroc and allowing ourselves to primarily focus on the soleus muscle. Now, you can see this bell is going to be directly over his shin. Some people will take a larger plate and they'll place it across the entire thigh when they do these. The reason this isn't optimal is because the center of the load is distributed across the entire thigh. We want to be much more targeted. So if you don't have dumbbells and you have a plate, stick the weight directly over the shin. And this will allow you to better focus the line of drive down through the shin and allow you to really focus on the muscle we're trying to hit. And as you can, if you need more of an angle, you can raise this foot up to press into the ground and get a little bit more than knee bent. So again, heavy, slow resistance. Three seconds up, three seconds down. Don't go fast yet at this point or else you could anger your tendon. But what you wanna do is find a light load that you can tolerate with relatively light pain. A slight amount, a one or two out of 10 is okay. Three sets of 15, this should not increase pain the next day if you're at the right weight. And then you're gonna slowly build up over time. Now again, we talked about how there's two muscles of the calf that attach into the Achilles tendon. We also have to work the gastroc. So I want you to stand on two feet, slow up, slow on the way back down. Slow is the name of the game early on with Achilles tendinopathy. You go too fast or too heavy, you're gonna feel it. So make sure you're going slow. You can see Graham's holding the weight uh, by his side. 
What you can do, again, to make this heavier, obviously more resistance, go single leg. Now, in my experience working with a lot of people who have Achilles tendinopathy, we are going to start on two legs and sometimes just slowly progressing five pounds per week up until they can get up to maybe about a 70 pound weight. And then I will switch them to no weight, single leg, and then slowly progress up from there. So that's the usual progression. At the same time that we are doing single, we will also do the seated. So we're uh, doing both at the same time. Now, the important thing to understand is early on, we don't want to get a very big stretch. If you watch how Graham is going to do these and see how he drops his heel below the uh, surface right here, that doing so is going to give him a really good stretch in the bottom of his calf. Now, with certain types of Achilles tendinopathy, like insertional tendinopathy, where the pain is not as much right here, but more so exactly where that tendon ties into the back of the calcaneus bone. If your pain is right there in a pinpoint to that area, you're not going to want to also drop this heel raise into a stretch because it's adding compression from the tendon on the back side of the calcaneus and it can also increase pain. So you wanna do this on a flat surface at first and then eventually you can progress to that. But again, it's as you can tolerate it. We don't wanna create more pain. And tendons speak the language of load. So I want you to understand not only is it creating pain during, but for the next following 24 hours, what does it feel like? If you wake up the next day and it's more painful, you did too much load, back off 10% the next time you go into the gym. Now, the third part of this is we have to restore some level of capacity, and that means plyometrics. Now, plyometrics, plyometrics are repeated loads. So you have your absorption, our change of direction, and amortization phase, and our concentric phase. So we're bouncing. Now, there's levels of this. We can scale up all the way up to world-class level sprinting and jumping, but we can also start just bouncing. So skipping rope and this very low level bounces are gonna be good. We need to get some level of repetitive load because now with plyometrics, you're adding in gravity as an acceleration vector going down. So you can start off very simple, Simple, you're not even leaving the ground, but you do have to get up. You can start with two feet bouncing nice and easy, single leg bouncing nice and easy. And remember, this scales up, so you can get up high, bouncing through the toes. Now with this repetitive, fluid, rhythmic motion, we're now loading the tendons. And that's the thing, is it's not just about adding weight. The weight and isometric and the slow control positions are great, but until we get that elastic acceleration going in, we're not gonna get a full recovery. So. You can continue to scale up. The higher you jump, the higher you land, the more force you're gonna have. But that's something you do as you are ready. Do not rush into it because that's a really big load on the tendon and you wanna make sure you're not getting there before you're ready. So again, tendons speak the language of load. So the faster you go and the more you use your tendon like a spring, the more it can get irritated if you do this too soon. So <clears throat> here's my progression with patients that come to me. We start off with isometrics and very low load heavy, slow resistance. And we are going to progress with isometrics followed by the heavy, slow resistance until they get to the point where they're walking pain-free. I will then transition out of the isometrics, just go heavy, slow resistance in the progressions that we did with that. Once they can usually get to about a 70 pounder or so, for, again, we need this to be heavy, and they can get to a very heavy weight with the seated, then I start them with the more plyometric. Usually I'll start off three sets of 20 hops as they can tolerate that. So if that's painful, nope, you gotta keep on going back to the heavy, slow resistance. As you can tolerate it, build up that to where you can do three sets of 50 pogo hops in a row like that. Once you can do that pain-free, you're good to start returning slowly to running. That's the progression that I've used over the last decade with my patients who have come to me with Achilles tendinopathy, and it has been the most helpful thing to allow them to finally get back 100% pain-free. So, Anything else you want to add to that? Just an encouragement that your Achilles are the biggest tendon in your body and they are not meant to be in pain or broken because at any point in our existence, if we had torn or irritated an Achilles, we'd be dead. So these are very strong, resilient things. They will bounce back with the right stimulus and the right uh, strength and the right, uh, repro right approach. So keep that in mind as you're doing this, you will recover. And if you haven't gotten it yet, don't lose hope. Just work on this new process and you will get there. There you go. So again, guys, to wrap everything up, it is not something that you can stretch and foam roll away. It's a load related issue. If you want to learn more about this and all the details and see the research, head on over to squatuniversity.com. And I've got two blog articles called How to Fix Achilles Tendinopathy. You can read all about it there and see the exact progression all typed out. 
In the meantime, head on over to Graham's YouTube channel at the Barefoot Sprinter, give him a subscribe because he's got a lot of good content and still there's so much more yet to come from both of us on this channel right here. So uh, keep up the good work, trying to get out of this Achilles tendinopathy pain. It can be done. Until next time, guys, happy squatting. They say that energy flows where attention goes, so I pay no mind. Why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching so caught up in their egos, these people have lost.